Hey friends, so today I wanted to speak about something that has been on my mind, um, especially as I've been spending a lot more time on computer science major related subreddits, in particular CS majors and CS career questions, and it has been something that's come up a lot. And so I just wanted to really record a video to share my thoughts and maybe help some folks out. So. The current economic situation is not great, to say the least. Now, there's an argument that you can make that the performance of the stock market is not directly correlated to the health of our economy. And while that is true, in the world of tech, I think that that is less true, as a lot of the companies that we tend to focus on, um, especially when it comes to companies that hire a lot, uh, so companies like Amazon, seem to follow their stock price very closely. So I won't say that this applies to all companies, but it certainly applies to at least the biggest companies and likely has some knock-on effects on other companies as well. And the reason why I say that it has these knock-on effects is because if, say for example, Amazon or Google or Microsoft, whatever, if they're not hiring, then there's a pool of former interns who will be looking for, well, new grad roles or their next intern role. And if their former company is not giving them a return offer, then they will look elsewhere. And that means that chances are there's going to be more people looking at roles for smaller companies or less well-known companies. To give a little bit of context of how my search has gone, I have received two offers so far. Uh, one from AT&T and the other from Fannie Mae. This was a little bit of a difficult situation to really make a choice between them, but ultimately, I'll, I'll talk about a little bit about that later on. So in a situation like this, what are some ways that um, if you are a current student or if you're currently looking for a new grad job, um, first of all, absolute trooper, best of luck in this economy, but if you're a student watching from the sidelines, maybe you're graduating next year, maybe you're graduating in a few years after this, what are some tips that I would offer in order to maximize your chances of receiving an offer, right? Not necessarily an offer from a fantastic like company like Google or um, Amazon, Microsoft, those big tech companies that pay insane amounts of money, um, but just any offer in general to get your foot in the door. My tips are nothing spectacular, they're nothing surprising, I don't hold any secrets, but here's what I came up with. So the first thing that you should really consider is to start early. And this is something that unfortunately I've noticed become even more and more apparent, especially as the economic situation worsens. So for example, I believe it was, I believe it was April or June, it or April or May of this year when the all-important uh, Pitt Computer Science Club repo for internships came out and that was really surprising and because it was for 2023 internships and we weren't even done we weren't even starting on the 2022 summer internships at that point and we were already looking for next year and to me, that kind of signaled that things were going to get not great, um, especially on the new grad scene. And these suspicions were kind of confirmed when Amazon and Capital One were the first two major companies that sort of went down and finished up hiring very, very early. So I applied to Amazon in mid-February, or sorry, mid-September, and I applied to Capital One also around that time in mid-September, um, maybe end of August, something like that, somewhere around there, like early to mid-September. Uh, and when I was talking to other folks in the discords, they were saying that their final round interviews at that point for Capital One were already the earliest schedule that they could do were in November, December. And... That was surprising to me because that meant that they were probably very, very busy, very, very backed up. 
and already had a ton of people applying. What made it even worse was that when people started getting notification that even though they passed the final round interviews for Amazon that they would be waitlisted for an offer, I think that's when a lot of people, including myself, realized that, wow, things are not going to get better in the short term future at least. Then the wave of hiring freezes and things like that also coincided around the same time with um, with those with that news and things just got worse over time. But all that to say, try to apply as early as you can. And this is a balancing game between your preparedness and the sort of amount of headcount or the number of people within a company's hiring pipeline. And what I mean by that is that if you apply early but you aren't prepared, you lower your chances of landing an offer. And with new grad and internship roles, generally they expect you to only apply once a year. So if you apply too early, you don't get the offer, then you've blown your chances to get that internship for that year. At the same time, if you don't apply early enough, like I did with Amazon and Capital One, even if you do well, for example, I got an 813 code signal, which is not the best, but it's still a relatively solid score in my opinion, you won't be moved on to the next round or the final round of interviews because there's already too many people in their pipeline. They already know that they have enough people if all the people pass their interviews and they all accept the offers, they are done. They have enough new grads. So they're not going to move on with people who complete the online assessment later than that. I would recommend that around the time when school ends, whenever that is, whether that's late May or early to mid June, 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 <laughs> I was going to say July, but mm, no, it's June. Um, so somewhere around that time when school starts or when school ends, rather, that is when your preparation ideally should start. So if you've been following my channel for a bit of time now, you'll notice that I've been preparing for a decently am long amount of time. Um, I started off by doing just one easy leak code problem a day, bumping that up to two medium problems later on. And that's sort of how I ended up preparing myself for the technical portion of the interview rounds. If you're a little bit more of a socially anxious or just someone that is not comfortable speaking to another person that you're not familiar with, then I would also recommend you to practice a little bit, whether that's uh, just going out and actually socializing with other people or doing mock interviews, things like that. I think that this is one of the sort of blind spots for a lot of CS majors is just the behavioral portion or just being able to vibe with the interviewer. Being able to communicate your thoughts effectively, but also be able to make a meaningful connection with the interviewer I think is a really important skill and something that will help you push past a lot of interviews, even if your technical skill is not necessarily the best. Of course, you should also have a strong technical background. The second tip that I would offer is to really also take that time during that June to August-ish time of preparation to focus on improving your resume as well. Once you're out of school, you don't have the pressure of classes and everything else layering on top. Um, so you have a lot more time to work on improving your resume. Fortunately for me, I was able to pick up two actually part-time internships at the last minute before summer started. And I believe that those two experiences were critical to landing me interviews. Your resume is not necessarily going to land you a job. That's what the interview is for. But in order to get the interview in the first place, you need to have a good enough resume that the company believes is worthwhile enough to interview you. In terms of what you can do if you do not have internships, one thing that I've been suggesting highly is contributing to open source. And the reason why I say contributing to open source is better than say, for example, just doing projects on your own is because open source provides a little bit of a collaborative and working environment 
that is closer to, I think, what the companies are looking for compared to working on projects solo. Of course, if you actually have the business acumen to set up something, um, build an app, and then actually launch it to users, that would also be a great, great thing to do. But the other benefit of open source is that you already have a user base of people who are using your product, whether that is consumers or other developers. And again, working in that collaborative environment, you make these pull requests, you get your code reviewed by an actual person, someone who likely has more experience than you, and you're able to sort of go through that process. That also gives you an opportunity to develop some of these situations or run into the, some of these situations that come up in behavioral interviews. Say, for example, tell me about a time that you disagreed with someone about the direction of a piece of software or a piece of code. These situations might come up during your class projects, but you're also much more likely to come across them in an environment where your main focus is code, right? So for example, a, an open source project or better yet, an internship. So that's why I highly recommend that. Of course, the other benefit to open source is that it provides a way to generate metrics without necessarily having to have an internship. So for example, if you're working on an open source project that has some uh, user base, you can say that you've worked on a project with that many users. Did you contribute to acquiring and retaining all those users? Not necessarily, but it demonstrates a level of impact that you have on your code, even if you didn't necessarily build up this project and weren't there from day one. Of course, bonus points if you work on a project that is used by a lot of people. So for example, like React and actually contributing to the React project. I think the final thing, um, and this is more related to the current economic situation, is to take an offer knowing that you can always jump down the line. I think especially when you stick to subreddits and these discords uh, where computer science majors and software engineers congregate, that it can be very easy to find yourself in a bubble and not necessarily realize it. You end up expecting that your initial salary will be at least six figures, if not, say, 150 to 200,000 in total compensation. When the fact of the matter is that in a situation like this, if you're a mediocre student like myself, chances are that isn't going to be the case. The benefit, though, is that software engineering is one of those professions where once you actually get your foot in the door, it is a lot easier to jump. It is a lot easier to find your second job after you found your first in a similar way that it is a lot easier to find your second internship after you found a first internship. So for myself personally, I've decided to take the AT&T offer. And the AT&T offer was for 87,570 base salary, plus a 3,000 sign on, plus 9% of my salary as a yearly target bonus if the company does well. Fannie Mae offered me $110,000 base plus a $10,000 signing bonus with no necessarily like static bonus, I would say. Both of these are based off out of the Dallas area, though AT&T is in downtown Dallas while Fannie Mae is in one of the suburbs outside of Dallas. And here I decided to do something that was maybe a little bit stupid on my part Maybe I'll come to regret it in hindsight, but I decided to stick with the AT&T offer. This wasn't necessarily because of whatever company prestige really means. Although AT&T is more of a traditional tech company in, in that sense, that wasn't necessarily the thing that crossed my mind at first. The main thing that I wanted to really try out with is living in the city. And this is something that I went back and forth on for a while, because if you also consider the 401k match and everything else, I would be leaving about 10 to 
$15,000 a year. Before taxes, we can say about $10,000 after taxes, working at AT&T um, rather than Fannie Mae. But I wanted to live in, or at least try to live in, um, a downtown area. I wanted to live in an urban core rather than living in the suburbs where I've been pretty much my entire life, being in a car-dependent hellscape. Just really not my vibe. So I decided to take the AT&T offer, even though Fannie Mae did pay a lot more. So that's where I'm at for myself. And those are the three tips that I would offer for anyone who is expecting to graduate uh, in a recession and trying to find their software engineering job. So to recap, apply and start to practice early, especially the behavioral part if you're not familiar or not comfortable with speaking to other people that you're not familiar with. Improve your resume, spend that time in between the spring semester and the fall semester. Take advantage of that free time to build up your resume. In particular, if you don't have an internship, think about contributing to open source projects. And the third thing is don't be afraid to take an offer that isn't necessarily as high as you want in favor of thinking that something ideal will come along. In any case, those are sort of my thoughts on this situation that we're in currently. And I hope you learned something and I'll see you for the next video.